Hey guys, welcome to another video. So today I figured we'd take a look at an operating system that has been long, long end of life, but was once one of the major competitors of Microsoft Windows. This is when people really valued a Linux operating system in their infrastructure, where they were highly supported and competitive with Red Hat, even Novell at some point. Of course, we're talking about Sun Solaris. Okay guys, so let's start the installation process of Solaris. We're gonna click Next. We're gonna to choose to reboot automatically after the software is installed. Eject CDs automatically, yes. Yep, that's fine. We're gonna to choose to select the media to install the operating system from the CD. And we're going to install the Solaris operating system. We're going to choose Accept and Next. Let's do a default installation. We're going to choose to install now. Okay, guys, so we're at the next part here, which is going through the process through the blue screen or command line configuration, which is basically we're writing the network configuration to the Sun Solaris system. Keep in mind, you'll see Escape 2, Escape 4, and if you, Escape 6 on the bottom there. And if you're in a situation where you're trying to set this up for yourself in a uh, testing environment, that's just F2 or F4 or F6 on the actual keyboard in order to continue using that particular option. So that's something to just keep in mind if you are going to install this on a virtual system to try it out. So I went through all the configuration changes here and set everything as needed. Something to keep in mind with Solaris, especially in these versions of Linux, is you can't use like special characters in your passwords because they all will cause the Linux system to think you're trying to do something at something else or you're trying to, uh, I don't know, like uh, use the exclamation point, you're trying to define something. There's, there's character definitions in all the special characters and using them in the password is just not supported in these versions of Linux. So just keep that in mind because this is an older system that if you do decide to create one of these things, you need a service account or anything like that, which I didn't set any of that. But if you do need a service account, you know, again, SMB1 is going to need to be enabled because of the, the age of the system. And also the integration service itself, if you need a service account, can't have you know, like a 14 character password, it's gotta be eight or less and you can't use special characters because the system won't support them. So those are just things to keep in mind if you're doing a Solaris uh, install. Okay guys, so the system booted and we're at the point where we're gonna log in. Now keep in mind, we have an option here between the CDE environment and the later Java based environment for our actual GUI, our desktop. So what I'd like to do first is log into the CDE so you could see what the CDE actually looked like, which was the original Sun desktop. Now the CDE environment as we see it um, existed not only on Sun Solaris, but it was a joint venture. So this particular desktop was really developed to run on all Linux and some Unix based platforms. And at the time, this was the popular desktop for AIX for Digital's um, DEC systems, the mainframe servers, um, for HPUX, IRIX, OpenVMS, True64, Unixware, uh, UXP, and the original version of Red Hat. But keep in mind that Red Hat actually used the open source version of this and they proprietarily rewrote it somewhat to make it somewhat different. They were in bed with a different company that actually wrote the GUI for the Red Hat system. So it may appear similar. It wasn't completely similar. And at the time this was out, there was no GNOME. So that GNOME environment that we see on all the desktops, um, on Debian-based systems, that really wasn't there yet. It was in development, but it wasn't quite there yet. It really went through about three series of beta before it was accepted as a usable operating system. And when it was in its, really, its, its infancy for its beta release to alpha to actually become production, that's when Sun Solaris got involved with it. And it was originally released on this system and called uh, the Java Desktop. But 
in essence, all that is, is it's the original version of the GNOME desktop. So what did you get in 1993? Because again, if we keep in mind that this is the way this looked in 1993, and we compare this in 1993 to what existed, which was really Windows 3, um, this blows it out of the water. This is just so much better. Um, some of the functions we get on this, which we wouldn't have gotten on Windows 3.1.1, is the ability to use an actual browser or the internet. Um, you know, Windows 3.1.1 didn't have that. Windows 95 was really the first operating system that came with Internet Explorer. Um, Windows 3.1.1, you could install things, you could configure TCP IP, but the functionality of the internet on Windows 3.1.1 was very, very limited. Whereas on this, you could use it with a browser that felt very modern and worked really well. And one of the, the bonuses here is because we're running this older system, we could actually take a look at that software as it existed in 1993. Okay guys, so what we get in 1993? And in reality, this is really 1996. And the reason why I say that is because this platform, this particular operating system we're on use the latest version of the uh, CDE desktop environment, which was developed jointly by a variety of companies. And those companies continue to support this particular version of Solaris is running the 1996 version. But in essence, it looked exactly the same. It worked the same in the previous version in the 93 version. We just got the later version of the browser um, pre-installed, whereas, you know, the older one would have came with version 1 versus, I think we're on version 1.7 on this particular machine. But let's take a look and see what this operating system actually looks like and what it actually provides. Now, keep in mind, at the time that this was released, we're talking Windows 3.1.1. So if you haven't already, I'll add in the description my previous video for Windows 3.1.1. Take a look at that and then look at this desktop and tell me which one in the comments you think is more advanced. Because quite frankly, to me, this is a way more advanced operating system for 1993, again, through 96, um, all things considered. So let's take a look. So what do we get? Well, we got a modern browser. Um, and by modern, I mean, if we compare this to IE in the Windows 3.1.1, and even the first versions of Windows 95, uh, this is way better. And if we go to about the browser, we could see that this is Mozilla version 1.7. So we know that this is the... Uh, precursors of Firefox. So what else do we get under the browser? Well, if you click the little up arrow here, we get the web browser, book, bookmarks, and then we have a search. So the cool thing is, is this is, you know, obviously way predates Google, right? But this gives us the ability to actually do a um, search engine built right into the system to, to search, just, just like you would have on your Windows 10 system, where you go down into the taskbar and you type something in, that gives you the ability to do that and find things on the web. So what else do we get in this thing? Well, we get a calendar. We also get cards. So basically what a card is in this situation is we have the ability to create a, um, a user's contact card. So you could create contacts. You could create calendar items. Um, you could also add additional icons down here. So if you wanted to add your contacts in here as hot links, you could. We also get a home folder. So home folder, all that really is is still like the, the later versions of Linux where you get the home folder. Um, like Ubuntu, but I mean, it's basically File Explorer. And if we click on this, we also get the options of seeing, you know, the floppy drive and we can also do uh, encryption. So yes, this machine will actually encrypt files on the actual system. So that whole thing with BitLocker, yeah, Linux and uh, Sun Solaris were doing this, honestly, like, what, 30 years, 25 years before Microsoft started to do it. So that's built into this. We could do file compression, so it had a built-in zip function, which we didn't get until Windows XP built into the system, which was at least four, if not seven years later. Um, we had the ability to archive files, so basically built-in backup configuration on this thing. And then we could also do a search, so like find files specifically on here, and we didn't have to have, you know, um, add additional services into the operating system to do so. Then we have something here, which is our text note. So basically what this gave us the ability to do was create, you know, Word documents. So basically it's .docs. Um, it gives us the ability to add text, text notes, so add a Word document. 
um, or create an actual text file like you would in Notepad. But then you also get the ability to notate things. So you can actually use a, a microphone with this operating system and dictate things into the system and it would create a text-based note on what you said to it. So now we talk about all this modern stuff with AI. Yeah, 30 years ago, Sun Solaris and HP were doing this already. Um, then we could also do a view of applications. So like your ad remove programs are built right into this thing. Um, and then we get into mail. And mail is interesting on this system because once we click on this thing, um, we're just gonna cancel that. But if we click on this thing to open this thing as blank and we take a look at this, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a look at the about mailer. And we're gonna see that this was written by Novell, Sun Microsystems, um, IBM, and HP. And the interesting thing about this is this was developed jointly between those companies and Netscape. And eventually this became the Netscape mail application, which by today is now called uh, Mozilla Thunderbird. But this is where it started. So that application's been around now probably a little over 30 years. Um, but that said, that's where this started. Now, we also get the ability to run multiple desktops. So that's, again, something that now I think Windows 11 is finally doing it 30 years later. But Linux has done for a very long time, right? We could run different desktops and different desk spaces. So if you click on different things down here, we can get different uh, desktops uh, showing up. Now, keep in mind, this is before people had three monitors or four monitors on a desk. This is when people only had a single monitor. So you needed this to do this so that we could have more than one window open and see more than one thing at a time. You would switch between those things to see the different monitors. Then we get down into printer support. Um, this gave us the ability to do printer administration, print management, default printer. Um, it would also give you the ability to set it up as a print server, which supported Windows as well as the um, uh, Linux operating systems all at one. Um, then we have something here, which is the style manager. And what style manager really is, is it's the ability to customize things in the operating system. But beyond that, if we click on the up arrow here, we get the ability to go into the update manager, the management console, um, the error log, so like an event logs. We could do find processes, which is basically like a services management console. Um, then we have uh, the CPU and disk. And if we click on this, we could see additional system info or open up the console on the actual system. And then we have the help manager. So the help manager is cool because it gives you not only the help from the actual system, but you can actually pull information off the net from the actual uh, help manager. Then we have trash, where you can trash and empty the trash. And you can add all the additional icons on here to customize the actual um, taskbar to provide that information. But this configuration was so far ahead of Microsoft at the time, and they made an enormous amount of money, Sun Microsystems before the 2000s really occurred because their systems were faster, their hardware was better, they provided supercomputers that even by today's standards we still are barely meeting the actual IOPS that were available in those systems in 1996. And I mean it was just another world as far as speed. Um, and this is really one of the systems that started that all. So what we'll do is we'll jump into the Java configuration, but I think I'm going to split this into a second video so we could configure, uh, go into what the modern uh, desktop interface looked like, um, and then we'll uh, pick it up from there. So look for the link for part two in the description. Like and subscribe if you haven't already, and hopefully I keep these videos rolling for you guys.